morning good morning again you are still tuned in the breakfast show with your host zizi po um you are now in a discovery hour where we speak about everything that actually concerns a believer and now time is 13 minutes um past nine and i'm not alone i'm not alone here in studio i'm with such <laughs> a beautiful queen uh, <laughs> a beautiful queen such an amazing um business woman she is very beautiful <laughs> And I will let her greet um, first before I read her bio. Um, hello, everyone. This is Nogotula Khonge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, I must say you're looking very beautiful. I love your Thank hair. You. I love your hair. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read her bio. Um, uh, my name is Nogotula Konde. Um, uh, is it Kunte? Kunte. <laughs> All right. I am a 20 year old. Um, I am a full time student at Nelson Mandela University doing second year in management practice. Second, um, we second princess of Miss Nelson Mandela Bay 2021, the founder of Tuli's Art. Um, Tuli's Art started as a personal journey of growth. Um, my hair, my my hair naturally. I created a curly wig which matched with my natural hair. People like the wigs. People like the wig. Um, started placing orders for the wig. I registered the business in 2019 September. In 2020, 2021, I launched the brand. Now I am. Um, now I currently introduce Afro puffs for kids. I. I am all things natural. My brain cell happies that matches with African natural hair. We have clients all over South Africa. Afro Bay Salon is our distributor for our Afro wigs in 2021 November. I won the second place in seed mentorship program. Um, Peach represented to this art. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Um, can you just... Um, as I read your bio, can you just tell um, about yourself first? Okay, yeah. my name is Noctola Khonga, as I've said. I am originally from Port Elizabeth. I um, grew up here, did my, almost everything here up to now. I'm um, a student in Nelson Mandela Bay. I own a brand called Tulis Art. Mm. So Tulis Art is basically um, a, a personal journey that started when I went short. And I think my story will start when, um, I think every dark skinned girl has um, that experience of having a, a, a lot of self esteem because of you yeah. are dark. You know? So I was one of those people. You know? And my skin was darker than this shade. This shade you see now is just lighter than the one I had. Mm. So on the journey of growing my hair, I discovered a lot of things that I was beautiful and I had a beautiful hair, and mm -hmm. then I um, I had this curiosity: Why do we always associate um, beautiful hair as a straight, relaxed hair? And then I decided to grow my hair naturally. And then when I wanted to extend, to put extension on my hair, I didn't want the relaxed hair. Yeah. And I wanted something that matches with my hair. Even with, with white people, they do put extensions. Mm. And we hardly see it because it matches with their hair. Yes, so wow. I wanted to do something that matched with my own African hair. Even if I, I decide to have a big wig, let it be natural as my natu my own natural hair. Mm. So that's how Tulis Art came about. It's not something I intentionally wanted to own a business. Yeah. You know, some sort. <laughs> it just came by mm. chance and I took it. And people really loved each and every item that I did and that's how I decided to register the business and I decided to do people's hair. Wow, and I love the fact that you mentioned that it was in like really in your mind that I'm doing business. No, but it was just um, something that you know people get to like, and then they were like placing orders. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, as you said, um, you started by creating a curly wig which matched with, with your own natural hair yes. and people like um, the wig and started to place orders. Mm -hmm. um, so first, where, where, um, where, where, were you doing it for um, being beautiful and looking good or um, is there a purpose behind it? Not for beauty. Um, 
I just discovered that hair is not just hair. Yeah. Right? So when you go to different okay, um, okay, occasions, yeah. you don't mm. always wear one hairstyle. You want to style your hair, maybe you want it to look longer, you want it to be dramatic, you don't want it to be dramatic. So as I've said that I was growing the hair naturally, um, then I wanted to put some extension, but I didn't want to put extension that didn't match with my hair. Mm. And I wanted to keep, um, I don't want to say the roots of being an African, but I wanted something that really relates to who I am that yeah. can, you know, really match to the skin that I have and to the type of hair that I have. Because, you know, we always um, being raised, Uguti, um, in order for our hair to be to to look acceptable, we have to use relaxer. That that's the question that I had for myself. But why do I need to run to a relaxer whenever I want to feel pretty? Why sure. can't I be pretty with my own mm. hair? So when I did the, the Afro wig, it was to look pretty in my own um, African way. Mm. Yes. And I love the fact that um, it, you are speaking about identity. You know, um, the way we look. Um, the way we present ourselves is also connected to our identity in yes. who um, we are. So, so I love yeah. the fact that um, your brand or the wigs that you have <laughs> um, actually portrays, you know, who you are. And as well, um, when the person um, wears your wigs, you know, it's a representation of who they are. African. African. Yes. Wow, that's yeah, truly okay. um, an amazing. Um, is selling wig wig um, a good business? I had that question in mind as well. A good business in terms of what? Um, maybe in terms of uh, marketing or in terms of money, in terms of... Uh, in terms of uh, marketing, yes. Mm -hmm. And in terms of money, yes. Um, this is the kind of business that will never go out of fashion we will forever go to events we will forever want to look pretty so i would say it's the business that is here to stay in any era people will always want to feel pretty so i would say it yes <laughs> it is um a yeah. yeah it is an ongoing business you it know it's an ongoing business and it mm. requires you to be unique have your mm. own thing we have a um, lot of people that do hairstyles, people that have saloons, but you only get to outstand by being unique. Mm. So if you want to be here for the long run, you have to be unique. Mm. Do don't don't thing. copy what you see no, on don't others. Copy this. <laughs> there is a room for everyone. That's mm. all. That's what I always say. There, I'm not the only one who does um, Afro weeks, yes. but there's something that is special about mine. That, that is my own uniqueness of the brand. Mm. So it's, it's, it's broad, everyone has a room, everyone has their own clients, and if you want to go um, extra mile in this, you have mm. to stick to your own uniqueness at no pressure, no race at your own pace. Mm. Yeah. And as you're speaking about, um, there are also um, so many people that does weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I want to know, you know, what keeps you going? You know, what keeps you keep moving, keep pushing, keep um, selling, you know? Uh, to be honest, it is the Holy Spirit. Mm. Um, multiple of times I wanted to give up. But every time I wanted to give up, I always have the evidence before me that hey, you, you want to give up now, but look at the things that you have done before sure. for the brand. Look at the, um, the kind of people that you have met because of the brand. And sometimes it's, it's a pressure where you feel like you're not moving. Mm. You're not selling fast as exactly. you're supposed to be mm. selling. But you again, you get um, a, maybe a client that will say, hey, recently I had a client from... Um, when I say I have clients all over South Africa, I mean it. I have had people from Venda buying wow. uh, my products. I have people in Cape Town. I have people in, in Tata. Those are the kind of most motivations that makes me to keep on going, that there's actually a hope for this brand. Mm. It's, it's not something that just of making money, but it's it's because um, the, the, the client that I had in, in Mtata, it was one of the Afro puffs that I introduced for kids. And she sent me a picture of her girls, you know, um, going to clinic. And she, she was telling me of the compliment that um, she got because people thought it's actually their hip and it's not. There's a slogan that I use that when you're wearing my wig, it's, it's, 
it's almost impossible to tell if it's your own natural hair or it's a wig up mm. until you say no it's actually a wig so that yes, was the kind of because compliment. even when i looked i was like is it is this a, a natural <laughs> hair wow it's so beautiful and i was like are they really wigs? That's the whole point of the brand. <laughs> is being natural, but still being pretty. Mm. So that, those are the things that really motivate me that there is a hope for this brand. Even if you may not make the sales that you want to make. But also what I love is that every bit of scent that I get, I make sure that I do something that I will be able to look back and say, I am proud that I did that. Mm. When um, the Holy Spirit, because um, when I launched my business last year, it as much as it happened exactly as I wanted it, but when I thought of um, doing e, um, the the launch, I always thought maybe I'll be making hundreds of thousands by that time, and then I had this um, huge idea in my head. And I think when God said in January, you need to launch the brand, I was like, how? Like, yes, I do have clients all over, but it's not the kind of the idea that I had. And once I obeyed that little voice that was in, inside of me and everything that fell in place, I had um, the event, the way I planned it and I wanted it to be, I didn't like anything. I didn't have any sponsorship. I'm a full-time student. Mm. But everything went well. I had the speakers that I wanted. I had the decor that I wanted. I had refreshments that I wanted. Everything was what I desired. So those are the things that Moing really keeps on, you know, depositing in my spirit. And I know for sure that this brand is going somewhere. Mm. And um, as you're speaking about the Holy Spirit, you know, mm. um, what I would love to know, you know, what is the, the importance <laughs> of having Holy Spirit while you are in business, inviting the Holy Spirit, you know, in your business to go with you? For me, it is actually the Holy Spirit that yeah. invites me <laughs> <laughs> But it is important to listen and to pay much attention and to equip yourself. Um, I am so glad with the um, with the relationship that I have with the Holy Spirit because it's not narrow-minded, it's not religious, it's not only speaking to me when I'm at church or when I'm supposed to pray. But it's a it's a spirit of wisdom where you you get to know about go to a certain place, go meet other, as we were um, talking before yeah. we went on air, that um, I love going to different events because I get to learn. Those are the instructions of the Holy Spirit. So I always say that, listen, it's, it, it, it's a matter of listening and trusting Him. Sometimes it requires crazy faith. It requires mm. to do things that... Uh, not comfortable for you. Launching for me was uncomfortable, very uncomfortable, because I had a lot of questions where I'm going to get the money, how I'm going to pull this off on my own. But I did that through the the um, the help of the Holy Spirit. So if you have a relationship with God and uh, have a relationship with Jesus, don't limit it. I always say that God mm. is unlimited. We only limit him because we say we can include you to this, but we cannot include you mm. to that. But it is the spirit that knows our knows our lives more than we know ourselves. God has the overview of our life. So um, we, we constantly need to consult to him. Am I doing okay? Is this right? Is this wrong? He will always lead us. So it's important to have that relationship of listening. Mm, listening and paying attention to people. Sometimes God speaks an idea and um, sometimes we'll come yo, this idea looks uh, <laughs> kind of impossible. But I love the fact that you said um, we should actually pay attention to the Holy Spirit, mm. to his voice and be actually obedient to her to him. Um, what else um, are you doing besides the week? I'm a full-time student, uh, um, student and I also uh, mobile hairstylist so i actually go to house, houses to houses to do people's hair so other than that yeah i'm a full-time student and also um, a mobile hairstylist yeah and um can you tell me how did your business grow um it grew via facebook and i had to take it seriously because for me 
Um, as I said, I had never had intention of growing, of having a business. Yeah. But it required me to pay attention and to take it seriously. Um, I had to open a bank account. I have to register it. I had to to market it. Recently, uh, this year, I started um, doing a pop-up um, market where I come in town and in malls and to grow the business. That's how I grow the business, to pay attention to it, to nature it, and um, to do what is necessary because it won't grow just simply by selling, but it needs me to to fully operate it as, as a manager. Thank God I'm doing management practice at school. <laughs> so I do take some of the advices that, um, some of the lessons that I get from school, and I do apply them on, on my business because I have now um, a business plan, a proper written business plan. I had, you know, I have goals that I want to accomplish through the brand, and it all started bit by bit. When I wanted to um, to do the the pop up sales, I didn't have a table. I bought a table early this year. I went on uh, on the market, and I posted it on Facebook. And someone said, "I like what you're doing. I will do a banner for you. Just do a quotation, and then I will I will um, pay for it." And they did pay for it. Now I have a pull-up banner, so it's it's paying much attention to it and doing all the necessary stuff. People are watching. People are watching, and being committed to it, it will open doors for you. Opens open doors that you won't even have to knock to them, but mm. they will just be open for you. Yeah. Because of your consistency. Consistency. Yeah, I think consistency is one of the most important things when it comes Very to much. business, work, and everything. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you tell me um, about your journey as a second princess of Nelson Mandela Bay 2021? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it has been fun. Um, there's a lot of learning and unlearning that have been happening along the way. Um, so I, I did enter for Miss Port Elizabeth because I wanted to be exposed and in working with NPOs. That was the crown for me already. And unfortunately, we could not function fully as as uh, pay our titles because of the pandemic. I mean, we were supposed to visit some of the charity homes, you yeah. know, and be being hands on, but we couldn't because of the of the pandemic. So I, I only and got to enjoy the process of asking for donations, going to people, getting rejected, um, <laughs> getting up and, you know, and keep on knocking to other doors. So what I've learned is that um, you need to be bold. You need to know that things won't always favor you. And when they don't favor you, it doesn't mean that you have to stop. Mm. I think the Bible says that the godly may triple seven times, but they always rise. So in that journey, the, the thing that, I, that I've learned is being consistent and, you know, always trust yourself and being bold. Yeah, being bold. Being bold and being trusting, bold. trusting yourself. Trusting um, yourself. Um, for anyone who wants to actually be in the wig business, um, who wants to maybe sell wigs or start wigs or, you know, something like that, mm -hmm. um, what, can, what can that person do? Um, I would say to that person, use what you have to get what you want. Um, there's no need to have a lot of money. There's no need to have, um, yeah, no need to have a lot of money. Use what you have. Buy one one happiness. Buy that single um, wig cap. Sell to that um, single person. That single person will tell the other and so on and so on. So just basically use what you have to get what you want, mm. eventually. Because you don't start big, but you start with the small steps and being constant and to what you, you, you are doing. Don't just eat your money, but be, be wise when using um, your, your, my, your business money so that when someone comes and say, hey, um, I see you, you, you have started this business thing, I would like to invest. In, in your business. No one would invest if ever you don't take your business serious. So stick the small steps, they always lead to bigger um, doors. 
Mm, that's very true. They always <laughs> lead to bigger doors. And how much are your colleagues and their Afro pubs? For the kids, um, the Afro pubs for the kids, uh, the pay is one fifty, and then the weeks they verify to the sizes and the kind of style that um, you, you that I make. So the curly ones start from four fifty, and then up to five fifty. I think the most expensive is six fifty. Oh, yeah. why, why? <laughs> uh, keeping it low, because. Mm. As much as I'm doing a business, but um, it shouldn't be expensive. Um, we already know that doing hair is expensive, yeah. but it shouldn't be like that. And I just love keeping it low like that. Mm. And also, um, you are a YouTuber. <laughs> you are a YouTuber. I think you've written the, um, I don't know what that is, you've written live hair and I don't know. faith. <laughs> faith, yes. Yes. Can you tell me about that here? Uh, okay, I started my YouTube channel, um, I think in the midst of the pandemic, because I've always loved writing. And when I started it, it was basically, uh, I could say video generalizing. So from then I had subscribers and then I was like, hmm, okay. Maybe people love what I'm bringing. So basically, I share uh, my wash day routines. I do vlogs. Um, I share a word. Um, I share um, some life experience. The one I've shared it was um, we are a father. It was titled "We Are Fatherless Generation." It had a lot of. Sure. Um, it had a lot of viewers, and I think I got most of subscribers because of that video. So it's basically life, lifestyle and faith. Mm, can you tell me um, more about that? Because really, we are a fatherless generation. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, um, lot of um, young girls and a lot of people are living um, without their parents. Others, they are parents, but they are not present mm -hmm. in their lives, you know. So I was one of the kids who um, grew up in the absence of my father and I spent half of my life believing that maybe if my father was around things would have been different yeah but it's only now that I realized that it happened and I'm not that what happened yes it did a lot of, 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 of pain a lot of trauma and I had a different perspective um, when I look at men because I was like okay men are a bunch of people that Decide, decide to disappear anytime they like. Sure. But I have to, I think that's the help of the, of the Holy Spirit that not all men are my father, mm. right? And it actually takes two to ten. I was sharing with one of my uh, uh, of the teenagers at church the same topic about uh, fatherless um, kids. I say that you need to forgive your father. Um, whether you he has apologized for being absent in your life or not, mm. but you need to free yourself because you are the only one that get consumed by the whole um, trauma of not having him around your life. You need to forgive for your own sake so you can have peace. It's okay. He was not there. He did not apologize. You don't know what happened, mm. but there's nothing you can, much you can do. Look how far you have come. Look how how I have grown, and it, it, I don't want to lie. At times I do cry, and ask a lot of questions. But now I've just come to rest that there's nothing I can do about it. Mm. There is nothing I can do about it. It is what it is, unfortunately. So you need to 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 bring that peace for your own self. Forgive that person. Move on if you can. Yeah. yeah, and forgiveness is one of the most things that free your heart. And <laughs> it does, but when you have been hurt a lot, you don't easily um, realize that. But mm. it actually depends on you, but because you are busy, you know, pointing fingers that this person has hurt me, um, this person deserves to give me an a, a, a apology, and I'm driving up to so it, it, it needs you to to make peace with with the whole thing that okay, I didn't get the the relationship that I I always wanted with my father. 
I didn't get it and I won't get it. Maybe I will, but for now I don't have it and I'm making peace. It's, it's a decision. You have to take that decision for your own self. I take a decision to accept that. I didn't have the, the relationship that I wanted. I don't have it now. I don't know if I will ever have it, but I'm deciding to, to make peace with it and to forgive. Mm. It's a decision. And also to accept um, God as your father, you know. To accept God as your father is to accept God as your father. Um, you know, I have had different encounter with this father who think, because you get people who say that you have God as your father, but God does not work with you um, in your first time at school. Um, yes, God is there as being the father, but I'm speaking from a perspective of, of being that someone who has felt so alone yeah. and so rejected that I that has been so been met with God that I hear God that you are here with me, but I would love to have someone who's going to call me and say, um, how is school? How is life? And the, the most painful thing is that you sometimes even think um, I so wish my father was dead, so that I'll know that. I don't have a father. The most painful thing is to know that the person is around, but they just don't decide to be in your life. Sure. But it also really takes God to give you that grace of acceptance and to realize that God is there as your father. He will always receive you. He will always love you. He will always be there for you. Mm. Yeah. Um, what, what, lastly, what have you learned, you know, in your journey um, of business, in your journey as well, in your own life, personal life, in, the, in your journey as Miss um, Nelson Mandela? <laughs> <laughs> um, from Miss Nelson Mandela uh, Bay, I have learned um, to be bold. Yeah. Um, that um, to be seen, it depends on you. Um, to how you present yourself, um, how to up, you appear t um, to people. And in my business, I have learned consistency. Yo, that one has been hectic, being consistent. And being consistent um, requires you to be consistent in even uncomfortable situations uh, where you, you feel like giving up. But your consistency say no uh, uh, we have come a long way don't give up now mm. so it has taught me to be consistent irregardless of how i feel or whatever that i'm facing at that particular time and in life in general um i have learned that our lives actually are the hands of god and he has the overview of our lives so it's better to trust him than to to try to figure things out of, out of our own um, mind because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly that we could ever imagine. So instead of trying to figure things out, just trust him, as simple as that. Wow, yeah. really we need um, to trust <laughs> in God. You're still tuned in the breakfast show with your host, Zizi Bo. And I would love to know what lastly um, do you want to say before um, we close today? Okay, thank you for this opportunity and I would love to say that to anyone who has a, a dream, um, pursue it. Pursue it, um, take those small steps, be patient, do not convey yourself um, to other people and at the right time God will Will, will will open those doors for you. He might not open them now, but eventually he will. Mm, and I love this, yeah. the fact that you also speak about, you know, do not compare yourself do with anyone. Compare. That is mm. our huge um, enemy, is to compare ourselves with others. Because when you compare yourself to others, you, you are blind to even see the progress the little steps that you take, the progress yeah. that you have, mm. because you are busy looking, but Ubani is moving faster, we started so again. It doesn't matter if you all started at the same time, there's no guarantee that you will reach the, um, the final, um, the, your destination at the same time. So do your own thing, your own race, your mm. own pace. And be patient with be yourself. Patient. Be kind, <laughs> be kind, be patient with yourself.
Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much um, for joining us today. Um, thank you so much for all your authenticity, you know, your heart that you've poured out here. And um, where, your, where can we get hold of you um, regarding the business? Um, I have a, a Facebook page and a page on Instagram. It's Tulis Art. Tulis Art. Tulis Art. Or you can um, send a WhatsApp on 071-9957-922. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, you've been um, truly a, a blessing. Um, such a good authenticity, authenticity, you know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, may the Lord bless you, you. Um, in in your business and in everything that um, you do. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you so much for watching. Um, see you right after this song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.